Our topic for today is logic gates. So, so far, we've been looking at uh, electromechanical relays as our switches. And so let's, let's look at uh, the ladder diagram here. Uh, we've got, say, two relays in parallel like this. We know that's an OR operation. And I suppose this is relay A and this is B. And then that's followed by relay C. And finally, then, that controls a coil Y. Now, to motivate our discussion of logic gates, let's suppose this is a 240 volt system. Over here, you've got ground. And this relay uh, system runs at 40 amps. Okay, so this is a relatively high power type of system. And that would mean, of course, if we're going to have 40 amps of current, flowing through coil Y, it's going to, the relay C is going to have to be able to handle 40 amps of current, and relays A and B are also going to have to be able to handle 40 amps of current. Uh, this logic function here, we can write down Y is equal to, well, we've got here A or B. Then those are in parallel, and then that's in series with C. So that's A or B and C. There's the logic function. But of course, as, as we were just mentioning, uh, all three of these relays have to be very high power relays. They have to be 240 volts and 40 amps. So let's look at a different approach to this. Let's imagine we do something like this. Uh, This is A, and B, and C. And this is a 5 volt supply and ground. And this is now coil X is 10 milliamps. Okay, so this is much lower power, lower voltage, and lower, lower current. And then, in addition to that, we've got another ladder diagram that looks like this. Now this is 240 volts, there's ground, and 40 amps, and this is now our coil Y, and now this is a relay X. Okay, so we've broken this up into two pieces. The first piece is at five volts and you know just a few milliamps. So these would be very low power uh, relays or contacts. And then this coil here, X, it, is going to just engage this high power single high power relay which then provides the 40 amps at 240 volts to the coil y so you see what we did here is uh, the idea is to do logic as much as possible at low power and then use the results to switch the high power part of the circuit. Now what we're actually going to end up doing is these different switches here are going to actually become transistors and we're going to have these are going to then be called logic gates and they can operate at low voltages like 5 volts or even the most uh, recent logic gates usually operate at 3.3 .3 volts. And so 
breaking up and trying to do most of the of the logic at low power levels so that would be inexpensive low maintenance types of devices and then just using the final result to run uh, and control a single high power relay to control our high power load so we can summarize this as in the top circuit uh, we're going to set x is equal to a or b and c this is going to be done with electronics and which is going to be low power low cost low maintenance etc and then finally just do y is equal to x in the electromechanical high power domain. Okay, and so the advantage of this is, is obvious in terms of cost, power, maintenance, and etc. So this brings us to a discussion of CMOS electronics. CMOS uh, stands for complementary MOS, which is metal oxide semiconductor and they're specifically the types of semiconductors are, that we build are field effect transistors or FETs. So these would be called sometimes MOSFETs. Okay, it's not a course in electronics, so we're just putting this terminology out there so you're familiar with it. Let's sketch out a field effect transistor here. Here's a generic symbol for that. Uh, this would be the gate, the drain, and the source. It's a three-terminal device. And we're going to use them primarily as a switch. So we're going to break these up into two different types. So we've got a so-called NMOS. And we're going to look then at this symbol here for that. Uh, and that's going to be this, this symbol we just, we just drew here. Uh, so we put a voltage on here. And we'll say for the NMOS that this thing is, acts as a switch and turns on and conducts if V is at a high voltage, about equal to some supply voltage we'll call VDD. And otherwise, off. All right, and that's say V, you know, is near zero, near ground. That would be the NMOS type of MOSFET that we would use. And then the C and CMOS complementary means we have two types of these devices. And the other one is called a PMOS. And we put a little bubble here on the gate to di distinguish this from the NMOS. So this is PMOS. And this works in the complementary fashion to the first one, the, kind of the mirror image. This is going to conduct if V is near zero and otherwise it's off, right, which would be where V is the higher voltage, like near the VDD supply voltage. So these are complementary in that the first one turns on if we make 
the gate voltage high and turns off if we make the gate voltage low. And the PMOS then has the opposite behavior. If we make the gate voltage high, it turns off. And if we make the gate voltage low, then it conducts. So this is kind of reminiscent of the normally open, normally closed type of relay that we use to motivate the concept of the, the not function. All right, so we can take these, kind, these, these devices and put them together and form what we call logic gates. Right? And that, so, you know, basically, like, you know, computer type system, a digital system would just be consist of probably, you know, millions or even billions of these NMOS and PMOS gates and maybe a few other uh, bits of kind of glue uh, elements and stuff put in there, but mostly it would be these these two types of transistors. So let's start off looking at the fundamental gates. We'll look at nine fundamental logic gates. We'll start with the simplest, which is the NOT gate. And, and the circuit symbol for the NOT gate is going to be this little arrow here with a circle on the end of it. That little circle, just like the, the little bubble symbol, just like up here, represents the NOT or inversion operation. Okay, and so if this was A and this is Y, this would implement Y is equal to A prime. So we want to see how to build this using MOSFETs. So here's what we'll do. There's going to be a supply voltage, VDD. Oops. Go. And then down here we'll have ground, drill volts. And then we've got our gates here. We put the PMOS on top and the NMOS on the bottom. And we connect their gates together like so. And then the voltage here would be our output. So here we'll, we have our input voltage. We'll call this A. And the claim is that this voltage is A prime or not A. So let's see why that would be true. So let's imagine in red here, what happens if A is uh, equal to 1? So if A is equal to 1, that means, so it would mean, by, by that we would mean in, in practice in terms of the voltages, that, that the, uh, the voltage at A would be near this positive supply voltage. Okay, so that's true, let's see. So when the, the gate of the NMOS is 1, then this thing conducts, okay? When the gate of the PMOS is 1, it does not conduct. So this is going to be on, and this is going to be off. Uh, and that means this is going to conduct. So we have a conduction here. That means that the output is connected to ground, and therefore... If A is equal to 1, oops, A is equal to 1, then the output is indeed A prime is equal to 0. Now let's look and see what happens if we uh, make the input be equal to 0. Oops. And uh, we come down here. Okay, so now we're going to have A is equal to zero as our input. What will our output be? Let's uh, do this again in red. Okay, so now we're going to have a is equal to zero, that would mean the, the voltage at A 
is near zero, the ground value, the voltage. So let's see, so if the, if the gate of the NMOS is zero, it does not conduct. So this would be, this guy would then be off. And the PMOS is the complement of that, so this would be on. That would mean that this would be a conducting path and the lower one would be off. Okay, so what would the result be? It would be that the output would be connected to the supply voltage VDD, and that would mean that this would be a prime is equal to one. So again, we would get the inverse. All right, so only one of these two MOSFETs can be on, and which one is on depends on the value of this input, A, logic one or logic zero, Right, meaning voltage near the supply voltage or voltage near ground. And it will, the one that turns on will be so such that the output will be connected to, to logic zero if the input is logic one and connected to logic one if the input is logic zero. Okay, so this gets us our, our not gate. We just need two transistors to implement that. Now we're going to just swap the position of those two MOSFETs in the NOT gate to form a buffer or a buff gate. So let's draw this first here. Here's our supply voltage. And our ground. And now we put the NMOS on top and the PMOS on the bottom. Okay, so that's our only, only change here. Then this is our output. Here's our input. This will be our A. And the claim on, on this is that the output will be A. Now let's see why that would work. Let's, uh, let's look at the case. A is equal to 1. Well, if A is equal to 1, right, we said that if the input voltage of the NMOS is high, logic 1, then it conducts. Okay, so this would conduct. And we can see what would what happen then. If the input voltage is logic 1, the output is going to be logic 1. It's going to be connected to the high voltage. Okay, and then clearly... We're going to have the inverse uh, operation when we put in a logic zero, low voltage. And uh, I should have put my circle there first, a little bubble. Okay. So now we're going to put in A is equal to zero. So when the claim is, it, again, whatever we put in, we're going to get out. That's the claim. So let's see. A is zero. So when the gate of an NMOS is zero or low, logic level zero, it shuts off. Okay, so I'll just put that here. This is... This is off over here. These were on on top and off on the bottom. And the PMOS is the complement of that, so it would be on. When its, when its gate is low, it turns on. So that means that we've got a connection in this bottom path. So connected to ground, which would be A output would be equal to zero. All right, so indeed, this, uh, this system simply recreates the input logic level at the output. And the symbol we use for it looks like the NOT gate, but it doesn't have the little bubble. This is called the buffer gate. And it's just that if there's A, Y is just equal to A. Now, why would we need a, a gate that would just reproduce the logic level that we already had? That seems rather redundant. And here's the reason. We might have a situation where we have 
some kind of a gate here. And it's got an output that has to go and drive a whole bunch of other gates. Maybe, maybe this is going to drive n gates. And in practice, these transistors have a finite amount of current that they can provide. You know, so this current that you can source or sync through these um, is limited. And each one of the the inputs to these different logic gates is going to require some current. So it might be that this is too much. So suppose this would be too much current to drive all these gates at the output. So what we could do would be to have this logic gate and then come out and drive a buffer and drive another buffer here and break those total number of gates we have to drive at the output up into maybe two groups each with fewer gates and the buffer then can output the same kind of levels of current that this logic gate would output uh, but by with the, using this kind of uh, architecture each one of these would only have to provide half of the current that we would have to provide in this original scenario so we have you know each of these are say have half gates and over two gates. So that would be an example of a use of a buffer. Um, it just allows you to recreate the same logic level, but it can provide more current. And that's why it's called a buffer. Now we come to the NAND gate. Remember uh, NAND, this st stands as short for not AND. Uh, it would be a, the negation of the AND operation. All right, so we'd have a logic that would look like this. All right, this is now a two input gate because uh, it's a two input logic function. The previous two were just single inputs. You just had an input A, output Y. Now we've got A and B. And NAND, not AND. So it's the, the inverse of the AND. And the AND, well, let's, let's put AND first here. AND is one only when A and B are equal to one, zero otherwise. And then we invert that to get the NAND. That's one, 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 zero. So this is only zero when A and B are one. Otherwise, it's equal to one. The logic symbol for the NAND gate is as follows. Looks like this. And then we put a little, oops, do this slightly differently. Put a little bubble on there. That means an inversion. Um, if we didn't have that bubble on there, it would be an AND gate. So this is the NAND operation. We'll come to, come to the AND gate here after this. Okay, this requires four transistors. So here is the layout. We've got here PMOS and then another P PMOS. And here we have our grains, supply voltage VDD. And then we come down and connect also the sources. So these two transistors are in parallel. And then from there we come down and we have two NMOS transistors in series. This input here is, is A, and this input is B, and B
input is also directed over to this PMOS gate, and the A input is directed to this PMOS gate. Okay, and this is your output then, Y. And the claim is that that's not A and B, or the NAND operation between A and B. So let's see why this might be. Well, let's, let's look at the one case where the output should be zero. That's where both A and B are equal to one. So let's just sketch that out. So A is equal to one and B is equal to one. So for an NMOS uh, transistor, this will be on if its gate is one. Now for the PMOS, they will be off. And this means that you've got a conducting path here to ground, from the output to ground. Okay, so the output will be connected to ground and it will then, therefore, have a logic value of zero. So that's this last row in the truth table. Now you can see that for the other three rows in the truth table, one or both of A and B are off, or logic zero. And so the corresponding NMOS transistor here would be off, and that would break this path, and you would no longer be connected to ground. At the same time, one of these two NMOS, uh, a PMOS transistors, rather, would be on, and we would be connected. Let's do that in a different color. Let's, uh, let's do blue for that. So if, if we have, let's say we had uh, A is equal to zero and B is equal to one. Okay, so if A is equal to zero, then this would be off. B is still one, so this is still on. Uh, A is equal to zero, so this PMOS becomes on and this one's connected to B, it would still be off. So the path for conduction would now lead up to the positive supply voltage. This would be on, like so. And actually, just to emphasize that a little more, let me use a dashed line. Okay. So you would connect the output to the uh, supply voltage, and then this would be off because you would have a, a break due to this uh, transistor with A at the gate here. This uh, NMOS would not be conducting, it would be off, so there'd be no path to ground, and there would be a path up to the positive voltage, so then this would be a value of one and likewise if instead the b was was zero and the a was one then this transistor would be off and this one would be on and you'd have the same process and of course if they're both zero then both of these would be on and these would both be off so again you would have no path to ground and you would have a path to the high voltage okay so indeed that four transistor circuit implements the NAND operation. Now, for the uh, AND operation, this is the symbol for the logic gate here. The output would be Y is equal to A and B. The way we can implement that is starting off with this NAND gate and then follow it by a NOT gate. Right, just invert it. So here you'd have NOT A and B and then the, the NOT of that would just be A and B. So the NAND gate we saw here it requires four transistors. The NOT gate required two transistors, so you would have six transistors, six FETs. For that up here, we'd only need four FETs. 
it's easier to implement the NAND gate than the AND gate. And so we'll also see it's easier to implement a NOR gate than an OR gate. And so if you were designing with discrete transistors, uh, you would probably want to modify your truth tables so that if your logic functions could be written in terms of as much as possible NANDs and NORs rather than ANDs and ORs. So that is uh, the NAND gate and the AND gate. So now we come to the NOR gate. All right, this is the NOT OR logic operation. Y is not A or B. And the truth table here would look like A, B, and Y. Well, let's first do the OR and negate that. A or B, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So this is 0 when A and B are both 0. And otherwise, one of them at least is 1. And so the OR is operation gives you 1. And then we invert that. So we get 1, 0, 0, 0. So this nor logic function is 1 when a and b are both 0, otherwise it's equal to 0. So we can implement this with the following circuit. Here's supply voltage VDD. Two transistors in series. And then that's in series with two transistors in parallel. So let's draw this here. These are input A. These are PMOS. That's with the negated gate. Um, then down here, you've got two NMOS that's in parallel and the A input is directed down to this left NMOS and the B input Direct it over to this right end moss. Okay, and the output is right here. And the claim is that this output is not A or B, the NOR operation. Now, suppose, let's see here, uh, there's only one row in the truth table where the output is equal to 1. So let's look at that case. A is 0 and B is 0. So A, A is 0, and B is 0. So if A is 0, then this PMOS here, right, if, if the, the gate of a PMOS is 0, then the PMOS is on. So this would be on. Likewise here, B is 0, so this PMOS is on. Now A is applied to the gate of an NMOS, if it's zero, then that's off. And likewise for this NMOS, where B is equal to zero, so that would be off. So what do we see there? There is a path from the high voltage to the output. And there is no path from the output to ground. So the output will be connected to the high voltage and Y will be equal to one. Now the truth table tells us that if either A or B or both are equal to one, then the output will be equal to zero. Let's set uh, A is equal to one. A is one and B is still zero. So B is still zero, so this, this FET is still off. 
and B is still zero, so this FET, uh, I'm sorry, is, is still on, excuse me, and this FET is still off, okay? So B doesn't change, so these two transistors, which are controlled by B, don't change, but A does change. So A was uh, zero previously, now it's one, so this will go off, and A is one, so this uh, NMOS will be on. Now, with that on, that means there's now a path here to ground. And so the output gets connected to ground. And because this transistor is off, well, then there's no path up to the supply voltage. And so therefore, in that case, the output will be zero. And you get a similar result if B was equal to one and A was zero. And if both A and B are equal to one, then both of these would be off, both of these uh, would be on, and again, you would have a connection to ground, but not to the supply voltage. So indeed, you would get this, uh, this truth table. Okay, so there's a four transistor circuit that would implement the NOR operation, the not OR operation. And the symbol for NOR is kind of, has this kind of funny kind of arrowhead kind of shape. And then we put a bubble here to mean the not. So this, this arrowhead kind of symbol is OR, and then we put the bubble to mean not. So this would be here A and B as our inputs, and Y would be not A or B. The OR operation, well, as you could probably guess, we would implement by taking a NOR gate and following it with a NOT gate. So here would be A and B. This would be not A or B, and then this would be the negation of that, and this would then just be Y is equal to A or B. So as for the AND, the NAND and the AND gate, the NOR gate, and then this would be the OR. The NOR, as we saw, required four transistors. The OR would require that plus two transistors for the NOT gate, so this would be six transistors. Okay, so four FETs and six FETs, we got the same thing here. Four FETs for the NOR and six FETs for the OR. So we've looked so far at six gates. We had the, the NOT gate the buffer gate, the NAND and the AND gates, the NOR and the OR gates. And now we come to three the final gates that we look at. And uh, these are somewhat specialized, but they have, when they are, are useful, they're extremely useful. So the first is called the XOR, exclusive OR gate. So let's remember that the exclusive OR operation is kind of like the OR operation, but the exclusive means that both of the inputs cannot be equal to one to get an output of one. So zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. It would be like the OR. So A and B are both zero, so Y is zero. A is zero and B is one. The OR would be one. A is one, B is zero, the OR would be one. And now A is 1, B is 1, OR would be 1, but the exclusive OR means only one of them exclusively, A or B, can be equal to 1. When they're both 1, then you get a 0 again. And as we'll see, especially when we talk about arithmetic, the XOR operation is very useful uh, because it tells you, for these two inputs, if we have an even number of 1s, we get zero. So zero ones, we get zero, and two ones, we get a zero. But if we have an odd number of ones, 
we get a 1 for the output. So that'll be very useful in doing arithmetic, also in uh, generating something called a parity checker. The symbol for the X exclusive OR is like a normal OR gate, something like this, kind of arrowhead. And then you put an extra little piece of a circle here at the input to represent that exclusive aspect of it. Here's A and B and Y. And the XOR algebraic symbol is a plus with a circle around it. We could, of course, implement XOR just from the truth table. We'd see what are the, the min terms. Uh, a is 0 and B is 1, so that's not A and B. Or the next third row, A is 1 and B is 0, so that's A and not B. Okay, so we could have two not gates, two AND gates, and an OR gate. But we can actually build a more efficient uh, implementation uh, directly in terms of transistors. So let's take a look look at that. So we have is a set of transistors in series or transistors in series like this. And then here, or more transistors in series. So we're going to have eight transistors. Let's see, to be a little more symmetric, maybe I should just go like this here. Put the ground there. Okay. And then the output is going to be here. Now, this top transistor here is a PMOS. It's got the bubble. This one is a PMOS. These are both PMOS. And the inputs will be, this will be A, and this will be B. And it would get pretty busy if we tried to route these A's and B's to the other, other gates. So I'll just put the names of the inputs. This would also be A, and this would be B. And these two inputs would be A and B. And these inputs would be A and B. Okay, the claim is that you get a 1 only if 1 and only 1 of the A or the B is equal to 1. So, for example, let's uh, assume A is equal to 1. A is 1 and B is 0. A is 1, B is 0. 1, 0, 1, 0. So let's see what the conducting paths are. Okay, so this is an NMOS. If the gate is 1, then that conducts. This is a PMOS. If the gate is 0, then that conducts. So these both conduct. That creates a connection between the output and the supply voltage over here. Now these, right, these are the complements. So this is a PBOS and this is an NMOS. So this would not conduct, this would not conduct. Now down here, this would conduct. Um, but this would not conduct. And this would conduct. but this would not connect, conduct. Okay, so there would be the connections. So we can see that we would have a connection between the output and 
the positive voltage uh, that would give us a logic one. Okay, so that would be the case when A is one and B is zero, and it would be kind of a just you could just see that you would just flop the situations for the A and the B if if you had B is one and A was zero. Uh, what about if they're both one or they're both zero. So let's look at that case. Uh, let's look at the case where they're both they're both equal to one. So where would you have conducting path in that case? Well, let's see. So in that case, um, A is one. This would be this would be on. Uh, B is 1, this would be off. A is 1, this would be off, because it's PMOS. And B is 1, this would be on. Uh, A is 1, this would be on. B is 1, this would be on. A is 1, this would be off. And B is 1, this would be off. So in this case, the conducting path, you could see, would be... Like so, and it would be down to the ground. This one would be on, but this one would be off, and this would be on, but this would be off. So there'd be no conducting paths from the supply voltage to the output, only a path from the output to ground, and therefore the output voltage would be zero. So this circuit does indeed implement the XOR, exclusive OR operation. Now, we also have the X NOR gate, which is the not XOR. It's the inversion of the XOR. And the symbol for this is we take our XOR symbol we put a inversion bubble at the output and then this is Y is equal to the inversion of the exclusive OR and that's also how we would implement the XNOR operation we would have a use this circuit layout to get us the exclusive OR. And then we would follow that up with a NOT gate. Okay, so here we would get the exclusive OR. And then here we would be inverting that. So this uh, XOR required eight transistors. Up here you got eight, eight FETs. And here you got to add two more FETs for the NOT gate, so here you'd have ten FETs. In CMOS, generally, the inverse operations, the, the NOT something, uh, takes fewer gates than the regular operation, like AND or an XOR. So the XNOR, what is the logic function? It's just the inverse of this. So let's take a look at that truth table for a minute. A, B, and Y. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And so, right, where the XOR was 0, 1, 1, 0 for the, the output, this will be 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so it's just the inverse of the XOR. Now we come to our last logic gate of the nine we're going to talk about, and this is called a tri-state buffer.
And here is the, the logic symbol for it. It looks like a buffer symbol. There's A and Y at the output. And normally, right, this output Y would just be equal to A for the buffer. But then we have this other input that goes in the side here. And this is E and enable. And what this implements is pretty much equivalent to a switch like this. A, Y, and then this would be E. So if E, let's write it this way, E equals 1 would close the switch, E equals 0 would have the switch open. So that's important because E equals 1 would then close the switch and this would just act as a buffer. But if E is equal to 0, then we open this switch, we disconnect the input and the output. Uh, that's not true for any of the other logic gates we've looked at. There's always a connection from input to output. This is the tri-state, the third state. We call the high Z, high impedance state, it's disconnected. This will be really important for us when we start to look at uh, arithmetic logic units where you're going to have want to switch in different components to do different operations. And they'll all share a common data bus. Uh, and so we can have a number of things connected to the same output. And if all but one of them are in this high Z state, then they're disconnected and they don't have any effect. And then whichever one we have the enabled, then that controls the bus. We'll see how this works. So this is the high impedance state. Um, and so here is the truth table for that. Here's the enable. And here's the input A, and then here's Y. So we'll zero, have zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. If the enable is zero, regardless of the value of, of A, we have the high Z state, disconnected. It's like you just cut this thing out of the circuit. Now, when the enable is on, then it just acts as a buffer. And we, if a is 0, we get 0 at the output, and if A is 1, we get 1 at the output. And this we can build from combinations of some of our other uh, logic gates and an NMOS and a PMOS. So here's the circuit that will implement this. Try to draw that a little better. There's a NAND gate, and it's going to drive gate of an, a PMOS. Here will be the supply voltage. And then that PMOS is going to be in series with an NMOS connected down to ground here. And the gate of that NMOS is going to be driven by a NOR gate here, like so. And then the inputs are, here's E, enable. And here's A, the data. And connect over here. And then that E comes down here, goes into an inverter and into our XOR gate. All right, so let's see. What is at the gate of this PMOS, what is the this, this signal right here? Let's see, it's the, well, we would have E and A, and then it's a NAND. So this would be, not E and A. So there's the, there's the gate value. Let's put it there. And then this would be on if this not E and A is low. Okay. 
is if this is if this is low, that would turn on the PMOS. So what does that mean? That this would be on if E and A is true, is equal to one. Okay, because not E and A has to be zero to turn this on. So E and A has to be one. Down here, what do we have? Uh, we've got here A, and this is a, a NOR gate. So A and then not E. Okay, so this would be, uh, we'll write it as A or not E, and then it's a NOR gate, so it's the inverse of that. Now we can use De Morgan's theorem to write not A or not E as E and not A. So this is on F. All right, so notice the, these two FETs here. Uh, only one can be on, not both. Right, because if E is true, so it's enabled, then if A is 1, this is on, but then this is not A, so that's off. And if A is 0, then this is on, but A is 0, so that would be off. So only one of these two will be on. And that will connect the output right here to either the high voltage or the, the low voltage. So Y would be equal if... E is equal to 1, it would just be equal to what? Well, if A is 1, then the connection is up to the high voltage, the logic 1. And if A is 0, right, then E and not A is true, and this one is connected down to ground. So Y would just be equal to A. That this is this, These are the last two rows here. If E is 1, then Y is just equal to A. If E is equal to zero, both FETs are off. And if that's the case, the output isn't connected to anything. We'll just say Y floats. It doesn't have any um, imposed value. It's just disconnected. That's the high Z state. That's these first two rows right here. Okay, the, as we mentioned, the, the reason this is so useful in larger systems is we'll often have a thing we'll call a bus, and that'll be, say, a data bus would be some data bits that are going to come out of, like, a microcontroller, and we want to have often a lot of things connected to that bus. So we'd have something like this here. Maybe this would be E1 and this would be A1, and... Down here, this would be E2 and A2. So if we enabled one of these tri-state buffers, then the bus would have the value of the corresponding input of that tri-state buffer, and the other buffer here would be disconnected, so it wouldn't have any effect. If we then instead turn this first enable off and the second one on, now the bus would be controlled by the A2 value, right? So this allows us to have a number of devices connected to the same output line, we'll call, say, the data bus. And by controlling these enables, we can choose which one of those devices we want to control that bus. So here's a summary of our, of our nine gates. Uh, we've got the not, just and the circuit symbols. We've got the not operation we've got the buffer operation and we've got the try state we'll just write as try which is a buffer with an enable input Then we've got the AND operation. The
the OR operation. and the exclusive OR operation. And then the inverses of those. Do it again here. So we've got the not, buff, try, the and, or, and XOR, and then the negations, the NAND, the NOR, and the XNOR. Okay. So those are the, the nine types of logic gates we're going to use in the rest of this course. Now briefly, I want to talk about these inversion bubbles that represent knots and how those relate to the Morgan's laws. So remember De Morgan's laws, one said that not A and B is equal to not A or not B. And another said that not A or B, that's the, all right, this first one, this is the NAND operation, this is the NOR operation, is equal to not A and not B. So the NAND operation, that's this, that's this symbol here. So your input's and output. Now then, this is an OR with negated inputs. We could represent that as an OR gate, but then put inversion bubbles at the inputs, which just re would represent a NOT. So if this was A and B at the input, then this would then become NOT A and NOT B input to an OR gate, and that would be then this NOT A or NOT B. Over here, this is the, the NOR operation, which is an OR gate with an version bubble at the output and then this would be not a and not b that would be an and gate with inversion bubbles at the inputs okay so this is a, a just in terms of our uh inversion bubble idea and our, our logic gates this is a way to represent de morgan's laws and in fact this is one of the ways that these can become very useful. For example, suppose we saw a circuit that looked like this. And we had here A and B into a NAND gate. And down here we had C and D into a NAND gate. And then those both came over here to another NAND gate. That would be our y. y would be equal to what? Uh, well, here we would have not a and b. And then here we would have not c and d. And then here we would take the and of those and negate that. So it would look like that and then like so. Okay, that's kind of a messy expression. But let's use uh, De Morgan's laws. Let's replace this uh, NAND at the output by this OR with negated inputs. So if we do that, we'd have here and here are two NAND gates with A and B. 
and C and D as the inputs. But now we're going to replace this NAND with an OR with inversion bubbles at the input. And that's just De Morgan's the first version of De Morgan's law. Now, if you have in a path, you have two inversion bubbles. That's a NAND. Uh, I'm sorry, a NOT and another NOT. NOT NOT is two inversions. Just take you back to the original value. So the the two inversions cancel, and then this is equivalent to uh, an AND gate for A and B, and C an AND gate for C and D your output and then it just goes into an OR gate so what would this be this would be A and B here or the other input would be C and D okay so these two things are equal and I'm gonna say that this second version is much easier to understand than than the first. Okay, so that's just a visual representation in terms of gates of the idea of De Morgan's laws. So finally, let's talk about uh, physical implementation of logic gates. Uh, in, in 1966, Texas Instruments uh, introduced the 7400 series of integrated circuit logic gates. And since then, in the decades since then, Different technologies have been uh, used to, to make this series of gates. And so uh, when that's done, there's usually a, two or three letters that are put in between this, the 7 4, which is the series, and the 0 0 uh, can be replaced by various integers to represent the types of gates that are being implemented. The HC here stands for high speed CMOS, and those are the ones we will use in the laboratory. So here is a schematic for the 7 4 HC 08, which is a quad AND gate. Uh, here's an actual picture of, of one of these. So you see this uh, TI SN is specific to TI here. 74HC08N, and that has to do with the packaging. So you have four or quad AND gates here. So here's one AND gate A1, B1, Y1. Y1 is A1 and uh, B1. And then here's the second gate and the third gate and the fourth gate. Now you need to have a supply voltage that would go over here, say 5 volts, and then ground over there. Okay, so that would give you four of the, the AND gates. And here are the some of the common gates that we'll make use of. The double O is, a, is NAND, O2 is NOR, 04 is the not, 08 is and, 32 is or, 34 is a buffer, 86 is an exclusive or XOR, and 7266, relatively newcomer, is XNOR. So you have, um, for the two input gates, you've got quads. And for the one input gates, you have hex, so you get six of those uh, for the single input and four for the uh, two input. And just a little bit on data sheets and timing specifications. So here are some parameters from the uh, 74HT00 data sheet where you have an assumed supply voltage of 4.5 volts. So some of the important parameters are VIH is 3.15 volts. That is the minimum high input voltage level. Any voltage that is greater than or equal to 3.15 volts will be interpreted as a high voltage. Then there's VIL 1.35 volts. That is the maximum low level input voltage. Any voltage Less than or equal to that will be is guaranteed to be correctly interpreted as a logic state zero. So a voltage in between 1.35 and 3.15 volts would be kind of in a no man's land. Uh, it, it's not guaranteed what how the chip will interpret that. 
Uh, v out high, 4.4 volts, is the minimum high output voltage level. So the, the Y outputs, when it has a logic one, will output at least 4.4 volts when you have a supply voltage of 4.5. And V out low is 0.1 volt. That is the maximum low level output voltage. So if your logic state is zero, you're going to get no more than 0.1 volts output. Okay, so based on that, you don't want to have input voltages between 1.35 and 3.15. They'll be interpreted as uh, ambiguous. Now, two important timing parameters is, number one, the maximum propagation delay. And for this chip, that is 18 nanoseconds at 25 Celsius, roughly room temperature. That is the amount of time it takes for signals to go from the input to the output. Okay? And then you have what's called the output rise and fall time. That is the amount of time it takes for the output to transition from one logic level to another, and that time is about 15 nanoseconds. So the significance of this is, is shown here. Um, suppose you have here your, your B input starts to increase from low to high. Uh, when it v hits the value of V input high, Right, that was this VIH here, which was 3.15 volts. When it hits that, then it'll be correctly interpreted as a logic level high. And now the output of the gate, well, there's going to be the time delay for the propagation through the, through the gate, and then the time for the output to rise or fall if it needs to. So you've got to add those up, basically. Uh, and that's kind of the, a delay that you will have for the actual output to get uh, arrive and settle at its proper output state. And that would limit how fast you could switch these logic gates. And we can see that that, that total time is, is on the order of, well, 15, roughly plus 15, roughly about uh, 30 nanoseconds. Now, sometimes we have to implement three input say an AND gate here, Y is equal to A and B and C. And if we have only two input logic gates, we could do that using two, two input logic gates. We could do A and B, and then AND that with C here to get the three input logic output. Here would be the same thing you'd do with an OR gate. If you did, wanted to do four input gates, you needed to do, to do that with just using two input gates that you had available, do A and B together, then and that with C, and then and that with D, and then you get the four input, and here, here would be for the OR.